I'm going to go over the process for installing Active Directory domain services and DNS on Windows Server 2022. The only thing I've done so far is install the operating system, gave it a computer name, as well as give it a static IP address. Um, currently I've just got it set to public DNS servers, but that will automatically change once we install the DNS role. Uh, to start, just go up to the top and hit manage, add roles and features, then hit next, role based or feature based installation. Then you just want to make sure you've got the correct server selected. Hit next and then hit the server, the roles you want to install. In this one, you're going to do domain services. Uh, this will install the additional management tools as well as DNS server and the server tools. Uh, those are the only two roles. For features, you just want to make sure that the group policy management is uh, ticked, which it is, and then hit next. Uh, I just want to hit next on the, the this information window and the same for the DNS information window. Uh, on here it will just tell you what you've got, so domain services, DNS, group policy, group policy and then the administration tools and then you just want to hit install. This will automatically go through the process of installing the relevant um, parts. Now this can take a couple of minutes. Once the installation has succeeded, you can either click promote the server to the domain controller, or you can just hit close and then go up to the notifications and hit promote this server to a domain controller. In the configuration wizard, uh, you've got a couple of options. You can add a domain controller to an existing domain, add a new domain to an existing forest, or as we're going to do in this one, create an entire new forest. For specifying the root domain, you can, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can either use a dot local domain, such as uh, whatever you want, dot local. But generally, I go with a subdomain of a domain that I have. Uh, so we'll just do ad.dannymoran.com. Uh, on this next part, you have to select the function level and the sorry, the forest function level and the domain function level. As this is a fresh installation, we're just going to go with the highest available, which is 2016. If you do have existing domain controllers, then you'll select whatever they're currently set to. Uh, but as this is there aren't any domain controllers, we will just go for the latest and then set a DRSM DSRM password. Uh, this will be needed if you have to for every reason. Uh, use the directory services restore mode. Uh, so I'd make a note of this password. Uh, however, you can reset it at a later date using PowerShell. Uh, DNS options. As it's a fresh domain, uh, you don't have any options to actually um, configure here. For our NetBIOS, I just always leave this as default. If for whatever reason you've got old legacy NetBIOS equipment, you can set it to whatever, but I just leave it as default. Here is where you can specify the database folder, the log files, or the sysfil folder. I generally just leave these as the default. Uh, you can change them, and it is relatively easy to change at a later date if required, but generally just leave these uh, alone for the time being. And then the, this is the options that we've specified during the wizard. If you click view script, uh, this is the command you would use if you wanted to install it through PowerShell. But as we've already gone through the uh, settings, we'll just hit next and then it will check it automatically for the to make sure everything's valid and all the prerequisites have been met. All prerequisite checks have passed successfully. All we're going to do is hit uh, install to begin. This can take uh, quite a while. 
and during the process the server will restart a couple of times automatically. Once the server boots back up, you will have to log in. Uh, you'll want to use the administrator account uh, and the password that you set originally. Although, I would note that this is no longer the local administrator account. This is now been converted to the domain administrator with the exact same password. Right, so the server's booted and we've logged in um, as the domain administrator. So it's AD backslash administrator rather than the local administrator account on the machine. Um, <clears throat> so if we go over to tools and then Active Directory users and computers. Uh, we can see that Active Directory has installed and it's uh, configured and the domain controller is showing as well as the built-in users and groups. If you want to create group user just right click and new user and you can just go through the standard setup process for creating users groups and now whatever else you need in Active Directory. Uh, the next thing you want to check is the DNS. So I initially had as the DNS servers for the network card uh, public domain servers, domain name servers. This has automatically been converted to the server local host because we installed the DNS service. So if we go to DNS and make sure it's actually running and then go to properties and then forwarders, we can see that the forwarders we added have been added to the forwarders list. What you can do is you can edit and uh, put whatever ones you want in here. Use um, whatever domain forwarders you want to use. And that's it for getting uh, Active Directory installed and a domain, uh, your server promoted to a domain controller.